everyone, welcome to Fist Pen with Liz. I'm Liz and today we're going to look at one of the basics of NMR spectroscopy, which is chemical shift. So in this short video tutorial, we are going to define chemical shift in words. What is it? We're going to identify the chemical that's used as a reference against which all other things are measured. And we're also going to use a data sheet to identify the different kinds of proton which produce different signals at different chemical shifts on the spectrum. So first of all, what is chemical shift? It can be defined as a scale that compares the frequency of an NMR absorption with that of the reference sample TMS. So this scale is measured in something called parts per million, PPM. And the reference sample TMS, it stands for, T is tetra, that means four, M is methyl, and S is silane. So it's a silicon derivative of an alkane. You might be expected to draw the structure of this. So we've got a central silicon atom surrounded by four tetra methyl groups. There we are. So that's the chemical against which all other things are measured. So that's set at zero. On some NMR spectra, a peak will be present at zero and they'll ask you to label it in an exam. So you just label it as TMS. But sometimes it's not present the person who's running the spectrum just gets rid of it because anything at zero, you know it's going to be this. So in the spectrum that I'm going to talk about in a minute, I've not included it. Right, so this scale in parts per million, what does that actually mean? So if we have a signal at two parts per million, that means that those protons required two millionths of the magnetic field needed to produce that signal compared with TMS whose signal would appear at zero. Another thing to notice about this NMR spectrum, can you hear that ice cream man? So another thing to notice about this NMR spectrum is that the bigger numbers are on the left hand side and the smaller numbers are on the right hand side. And an NMR spectrum for proton NMR is usually from 0 to 15. So on this one I've done it's just 0 to 12 because that's what I wanted to illustrate for this sample. There were no other peaks after 12, but it can be from 0 up to 15. Okay, so we've got an NMR spectrum with two signals. What you'll need is a data sheet. So at the top we've got carbon NMR and underneath we have proton NMR. So today we're just interested in proton NMR underneath. So what we do is we look at the number where this signal appears and then we find it on our data sheet. So if we look for something at two parts per million, we'll see it can be any number of things. It could be due to an OH proton, an NH proton, HCr, or an aromatic carbonyl, or something with a nitrogen in. So this is just a general example. We don't know what the sample should be. If you've got no idea what kind of sample it is, you list all the things that that signal could be. If you're given some extra information like um, empirical or molecular formula, an IR or mass spectrum, then you might be able to narrow it down from that. In this example, we have another signal. This is at 11.5. So we annotate our spectrum delta, which is a symbol for chemical shift, amongst other things equals 11.5 parts per million. We look at our data sheet around 
it could be a proton on a carboxylic acid here or it could also be an OH or NH proton. Now these are the funny ones, they can appear at any point on a proton and MR spectrum. So that's just a short introduction to chemical shift. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you.